All right, so I'm asked all the time, hey Brent, what's the best way to invest? What's the best way to invest in real estate? What's the best way to invest in stocks? I say invest in both, and in this video, I'm gonna show you, is it better to invest in stocks or real estate? Hey guys, it's Brent Bowers. I've been investing in real estate since 2007. So I have a pretty good understanding of what I can do in real estate, how to borrow money, how to, how to invest the money right, and how to insure it and keep my investments safe. All right, and your answer to your question might actually surprise you. So by the end of this video, you're gonna know what the best situation is for you and which route you should take. Okay, so my favorite thing about the stock market, stock investing is passive. You could put your money in it and park it and never look at it again and worry about it later when it's time to take it out when you're ready to retire. But that's what I love about the stock market. Real estate, not so much. But to do that, to passively park your money, that means you've got to have the money to put it in there. When I started investing, I didn't pick the stock market first. I picked the real estate route because I didn't have money. I had time, no money, and I put resources together to start making money in real estate. Now that I'm earning money in real estate, guess what? I'm now diversifying a little bit. I'm putting it in the stock market. I'm putting it into silver. I'm putting it into cryptocurrency. But I didn't start with investing in the stock market first, but I love the passivity about it. What does passive mean? That means like you're not going out and doing anything for it. It's doing it for you. You know, if you would have only invested in say Apple or Amazon or Tesla or Coca-Cola when your grandfather or somebody mentioned it to you or, or Facebook, like, you would be sitting really well right now. So keep that in mind, but you gotta make the money to be able to passively put that in there. So the further push this point is most of the time people won't lend you money to buy stocks, or you might be able to go get a credit card advance, but I don't recommend this. Like this is outrageous usury fees that you'll pay for those credit card advances. And you can't insure them. If the stock market goes down or the business goes bankrupt, you know, so there's some ways to, you know, like alleviate or take some of the risk out by maybe doing the S&P 500. But uh, you know, there's there's so many risks and, and you can't insure the stock if it goes down. Another thing that scares me about the stock market is there's nothing tangible to this. You know, when we actually compare and contrast to real estate, real estate's actually tangible. Whether it be a piece of land, you can farm it, you can you can run cattle on it, you can lease it out to farmers and, and uh, cattlemen, you name it. Or you can sell it, you can, you can plant timber on it, you can grow trees on it, you can actually go and use it. Build a cabin, create an Airbnb off of it. If it's a house, you can rent it out, you can live in it. Real estate's tangible. That's what I love about investing in real estate. Stock market, not so much. I'm actually buying, you know, it's really just electronic, it's digital. All right, let's talk about when you sell real estate or stocks. You know, if you've held it for more than one year, for 12 months, you now hit, get what's called the capital gains. You know, you get hit with capital gains taxes. If you sell it before that one year, you actually get hit with ordinary income taxes, which is a little bit higher than capital gains. Now, real estate, there's some ways to get around those capital gains or the ordinary income taxes. If you lived in it two of the last five years, or you can do a 1031 tax exchanges, you know, and these are get a little complicated to where you sell that property and you have another one in mind that's just a little bit more expensive. You can move that money from one real estate transaction to another tr real estate transaction tax-free. Or I mentioned living in it out of the last two, two out of the last five years. So let's just say me and my wife buy a house, we live in it for two and a half years, and then we turn around and sell it the next year. Well, we earned say $150,000 in profits. We bought it for 100 and we sold it for 250, so we get to pocket that $150,000 tax-free because we lived in it two out of the last five years. You can't do that with the stock market. If you sell it, you're never able to live in your stocks. Another thing that's not talked about a lot is called depreciation. You cannot depreciate a stock but you can depreciate a rental, a piece of real estate. Now it's gotta have a building on it to depreciate it. You can't depreciate land, you can depreciate a house, you can depreciate multifamily, apartments, commercial, office space. What depreciation is, it just gives you a tax write-off for any renovations you do, carpet, refrigerators, roofs, you name it, the building. It allows you tax write-offs. The government gives you credits on your taxes to be able to write off your income. There's a reason why Donald Trump and Warren Buffett pay less taxes than their secretaries do. It's because they own rental properties. Now let's talk more about real estate. Real estate's more of an active business. You can't just put your money in it and forget about it or borrow some money and then 
buy the house and forget about it. You actually have to keep up with the maintenance. You have to, you know, inspect the property, make sure that your tenants aren't creating meth labs in it or, you know, put, putting raw materials or, you know, raw sewage or, you know, you name it. Like I've seen tenants do some crazy things. It will absolutely destroy the property if there's no management. Then you got to keep up with the renovations and the maintenances. Is the roof leaking? Are the shingles good? Is the paint peeling? All these little things. This is an active business. You got to stay on top of it. Some people hire property managers to do this, but sometimes their property managers don't even do that for them. So you personally sometimes have to go and inspect these properties yourself. And then there's the insurance. You got to make sure the insurance is paid up. You know, if you have a mortgage on the property, a lot of times the mortgage company will build it into your escrows where you pay for it every single month and they'll pay the insurance once a year. I love this method because then I don't have to think about it. But what about my properties that are paid for free and clear? I've got to make sure the insurance stays up to date. And guys, there have been times where my insurance has lapsed and there's been hurricanes coming in Florida and I'm like, oh my goodness, there's no insurance on this house in Palm Bay or whatever. So this, this is a little nerve wracking. So my favorite part of investing in real estate is other people's money pay for my asset. They pay for my investment. When I say asset, I mean the asset puts money into my pocket. Just like Robert Kiyosaki says, anything that puts money in your pocket is an asset. Anything that takes money out is a liability. So our homes, our personal homes, it's a liability because I pay every month for that mortgage or the rent or the repairs that are needed when the roof leaks or the, the air conditioner needs fixed or it's time to paint that is taking money out of my pocket. So technically my own personal home turns into a liability because it's not putting money into my pocket, but a rental property, a rental property that I borrowed money from the bank. I borrowed a hundred thousand dollars from the bank and let's just say my payments, you know, $600 a month and my tenants paying me $1,200 a month rent. Well, my tenant, is using their money to pay that down my mortgage so my property appreciates and my mortgage pays down and then I also get to depreciate it and, and improve my tax you know, circumstances so other people's money are actually paying for my investment. All right, so I mentioned the tenant paying me $1,200 a month and I wanna get into that. That's pretty powerful, but before I do, Go ahead and like this video. I love to make these videos. If, if, if I see some like buttons going up, I'll know I'm on the right track. If I see the down arrow or the down thumb button, I'll know that I need to improve these videos and talk about better things. So please like the video. Hopefully you like it and uh, let's keep moving. The cash flow. I'm talking about paying a mortgage of $600 a month. Now granted, my tenants pay me $1,200 a month. I'm cash flowing. But every six or eight or nine months, there's always going to be a repair on these properties. So I need to keep some of that cash flow I'm receiving at $600 a month. In 10 months, it's going to be $6,000. I might have to take $1,000 of that to fix an air conditioner or $500 of that to you know replace a carpet in a room. You name it. Things happen. Like when you have tenants, you're going to have to keep take good care of these properties if you want to keep the best tenants. All right, Grandpa always said, buy land. They're not making any more of it. That's why I'm the land guy. That's why I created the program called the Land Sharks. So we buy land at crazy massive discounts. We'll pay anywhere from 20, 30, 40 cents on the dollar and we'll purchase this piece of land at a discount and then we'll turn around and sell it to a buyer looking for a piece of land that can afford to make the monthly payment. So we go out and create these notes and this is providing us cash flow income and this is what I the absolute my holy grail investment and that's buying and selling land and grandpa really he he should get the benefit because he told us land's the best investment they're not making any more of it all right and then I'm almost to my final point here real estate generally goes up in value it, it generally goes up around six percent on average that's including the ups and the downs and the slowdowns stocks also go up in value if they pick the right stock so I say make money in real estate first and then start investing it in other things such as like stocks and gold and silver and cryptocurrency but you got to take care of your expenses first then you have financial freedom then you start to get a savings pay off all your debts and then start investing in the stock market most of the time people don't understand the stock market is super risky and you can lose all your money and have nothing to show for it all right guys as you know the real estate market is absolutely exploding i talked to you a little bit about what we're doing in land we've got a tried and true method of buying land at crazy discounts and selling the stuff in your sleep. So if you're interested in building a business that provides income for you and your family and serves you and others, check out thelandsharks.com. Schedule a call with my team. We'd love to know what your real estate investing goals are. And if we feel like we're a great fit, I'd be honored to coach you.